There's something I want to tell you about. Something else that's wrong with me. I think I've been getting a bit out of control in my hour. When I first got the hour, I, I was shocked, obviously. It took me a while to work out that everyone was frozen and only I could move. Because I live on my own. What would you do, Doctor, if you had an hour where everyone was frozen? Go to a fairground? I did think what good could I do other than catch up with work. I did see a woman who was having her purse snatched, so I gave her purse back and the crook I placed him on a bus a few blocks away. I have no idea where it was going. She'd never really be able to thank me, so I took another picture. I spent most of Valentine's Day at the art gallery, well, the evening part anyway. They had a display with the theme, Love Conquers All. I didn't get most of the paintings, but they were well done. Ha! <laughs> that was just an example, Doctor. I'm sure you can come up with more exciting things to do than that. I dug the grave for Dr. Decker. I helped carry his coffin to the burial site. Do you know what? It didn't weigh enough to have a body in it. Why do you think that is? Possibly a relative of yours. Possibly a patient that died here. I'm not sure. She doesn't normally say anything. No, the coffin wasn't empty. There was something in it. A decoy, I'd imagine. I'm guessing he was buried somewhere else, or cremated. Somebody somewhere didn't want his body going in the ground. Do you want to be cremated or buried, Doctor? If you're buried, people can bring you back. You don't want to see people when they've come back. Well, that makes me feel a little better. There's a young mother, divorced, who lives opposite me. Jessica. She's friendly and says hello to me, smiles. I've always wondered what she looks like naked. So one hour, I broke into her house. She was standing in her bedroom. I took it as a sign. I took off her clothes and... I took photos of Jessica when she was naked. When I'd stripped her. When she was naked and frozen. I didn't want to have to do it again, to strip her again. So I took pictures to remind myself what she looked like. That's wrong, isn't it, Doctor? I know. It's that bloody Dr. Decker. He made me this way. It's all his fault. Like I said, I originally presented with depression, and everything was going well for a while. Then Dr. Decker changed. Yes, I would steal too, and I have stolen. I ran out of milk, so I thought I'd go to the local all-night shop and get some more. I was absolutely intending to pay, 
But when I got there, everyone was frozen. I thought about leaving money on the counter, but that seemed weird. The cashier would wake and suddenly this money would have appeared from nowhere. But I've stolen bigger things. He was easily distracted during sessions, like he wasn't listening. I'm pretty sure he wasn't listening half the time. I don't think he wanted to know about his patients anymore. But when he did give you advice... He told me to use my imagination, to make something up, to think something crazy, and it would become real. He told me to think of a way to get more time. So I did. But he pushed me. He made me think it. Yes, I suppose I've destroyed a few things whilst in the hour. You can be the perfect supervillain. Nobody knows it was you. That wretched dig goes on 24-7. 25-7, if you ask me. Your patient, Nathan, caused quite a stir. He interrupted one of the female students all night, apparently. Made her miscategorize some findings, going on about his dead girlfriend. It's amazing what you hear at the coffee machine. Well, I suppose that's a bonus. We're allowed to use their coffee machine while they're there. Because you have to hope, don't you, Doctor? It's only the power of hindsight that made me realize how toxic it all was. And after a point, you go too far to be able to come back anyway.